All right, cirrhosis differential diagnosis. Let's get into it. So first, what are the goals for the lesson? We're going to define cirrhosis, and then we're going to understand the different causes of cirrhosis and organize our differential diagnosis. Okay, so first, what is cirrhosis? Cirrhosis is widespread scarring, the medical term we use is fibrosis, uh, that happens in the liver that ultimately leads to liver dysfunction. And because you have all this scar tissue in the liver, it's disrupting the liver cell's ability to carry out their normal function. So let's go into our approach for the differential. And again, the differential diagnosis is a term we use for all the different possible causes. So we'll go over a framework for this. And I think it's most helpful to think of it in three broad buckets. Uh, upstream causes from the hepatic vein, downstream causes from the biliary system, and then causes within the liver organ itself, what we'll call parenchymal causes. So let's start upstream with the hepatic vein. So here you should think about cardiac cirrhosis. So if there's some sort of problem with the right side of the heart, it's not pumping well, blood's going to back up into the hepatic vein and you get increased pressures and damage to the liver. So that's one thing that can cause cirrhosis. The next bucket is biliary causes. So this is things like primary biliary cirrhosis, uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis, so that's PVC and PSC, and also cystic fibrosis. So what happens uh, with these conditions, you have some sort of damage to the biliary tree system, the bile ducts. And so, you know, you get bile backs, backs up into the liver, um, and this increased pressure can cause damage to the liver, ultimately leading to cirrhosis. So we've got upstream hepatic vein, downstream biliary system. Now let's look within the liver itself, what we call paren the parenchyma. So that's basically the liver organ tissue. And I created this mnemonic GAMET to sort of further structure our understanding of parenchymal causes. And I created this mnemonic for a couple of reasons. One, because we're creating, creating a mnemonic, we're sort of gaming the system. So that should make you think of GAMET. But also another reason is as we'll learn, alcohol is one thing that can cause parenchymal uh, cirrhosis. And alcohol is often associated with scenarios where games are being played, like gambling. So for those two reasons, you should remember the parenchymal causes of cirrhosis with the game at mnemonic. So let's get into them. First, it's genetic. So the specific ones we're focusing on are hemochromatosis. So this is when you have too high iron levels in the body due to a uh, genetic mutation. Uh, Wilson's disease. So this is genetic abnormality increasing copper levels. And then alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So our body normally has alpha-1 antitrypsin that helps us defend against different toxins and things in the liver and in the lungs. So if you have a deficiency, you're more at risk for those toxins causing damage to these organs. In kids, there's a couple other genetic causes to think about, like type 4 glycogen storage disease and tyrosinemia. But for simplicity, I just focused on these three here. Okay, next A is for autoimmune. So that's autoimmune hepatitis, your own immune system attacking the liver. The ME, this is metabolic, and this should make you think of NASH. So non-alcoholic steatohepatosis, NASH. Um, this is also sometimes referred to as fatty liver disease. All right, now the I is for infection. Uh, specifically, we're concerned about viral hepatitis. So hepatitis B virus, which may or may not have superimposed hepatitis D infection, uh, and also hepatitis C. So hep B, hep C, hep D, those are the ones to think about for infectious causes. And lastly, toxins. So here we're focusing on alcohol as well as certain medications. And the main medications to be concerned about as potential culprits are things like amiodarone, methotrexate, isoniazid, and vitamin A. And for vitamin A, it's like excessive amount. So like what you would have if you ingested, um, like if you ate a polar bear liver, for example, um, you're not gonna get cirrhosis just from the couple carrots you eat at lunch. All right, this is the broad differential diagnosis for cirrhosis, but I also wanna talk about what are the most common causes. 
So the most common causes of cirrhosis are viral hepatitis, uh, specifically hepatitis B and hepatitis C, alcohol, and NASH, or fatty liver disease. So worldwide, viral hepatitis is the most common cause. Uh, within developed countries, viral hepatitis is, has slightly lower prevalence, slightly less common, but it's still one of the most significant causes. And then the other point I want to make is that NASH, or fatty liver, this is going to be increasing. Its prevalence is on the rise, and in the future we'll see more and more cases of this due to uh, obesity epidemics um, and increased prevalence of metabolic syndrome. All right, let's summarize what we learned today. We learned that cirrhosis is widespread liver scarring that leads to liver dysfunction. We learned that cirrhosis causes can be classified by hepatic vein, which is upstream of the liver, biliary, which is downstream, or parenchymal causes, so within the liver organ tissue itself. We further classified parenchymal causes by remembering this gamut mnemonic. This stands for genetic, autoimmune, metabolic, infection, and toxin. Gamut. And lastly, we learned the most common causes of cirrhosis are viral hepatitis, alcohol, and NASH, or fatty liver disease. All right, here are some of my references. Uh, this schema for the hepatic vein, biliary, and parenchymal causes, I drew from one of the schemas on clinical problem solvers, but then I added in my own gamut mnemonic for parenchymal causes because I felt that really optimize you know, the structure, uh, being able to remember the causes. So these other references here. So that's all everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found it helpful. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.